Hi everybody, this is Margarita with City Gal Papetry. It's been a minute. Thank you so much for returning to my channel, for tuning in and checking out what I have to show you today. I wanted to dedicate this video to anybody who has wanted to dabble in mixed media but has been a little bit afraid to uh, ruin your project or your work. Um, it's also an idea for how to use your junk mail because I get tons of these like, catalogs and things like that and you know there's just so many and it's so much waste and I thought you know I'm sure that I can find a way to use this so what I've done here is this is just a catalog for like kids toys and things like that and um, I grabbed some gesso and this is the gesso that I use it's acrylic gesso by handy art I purchased this off of Amazon it's fairly inexpensive and you get a lot of it in this one jar uh, it is 32 ounces so this will last me quite some time I like it because it's pretty thin um, it's not too thick some gessos I find are very thick and a little bit hard to spread but for something like this this is perfect and I don't care how much I use because I've got so much of it um, and so basically I just put a coat of that onto this onto uh, each sheet and then I let that dry and that gives us this result and so it's nice and sort of chalky and it gives a nice you know finish to play around with with mixed media um, you could pre prep like all of your pages from the catalog if you choose the pages are going to be pretty flimsy and they're going to curl because obviously this isn't like high quality paper um, this is really just to practice and play around with your supplies um, or you could you know paint your pages with the gesso as you uh, work on them so you can you know prep a page let it dry it dries pretty quickly and then come back and use your paints so I have here some acrylic paints I have some watercolor uh, paints these are super cheap from five below it's a like dollar type store that we have here and I also have some uh, gelatos uh, both I think I have the gelatos uh, that are my favorite Castell and I also have some uh, the crayons from recollections and I'm just gonna play around with some of these to just kind of show you some of the things that you can do with this paper I also have some magicals so you know I have had these for a while and like I just haven't used them I I d didn't know how they reacted I wasn't sure what they did and so this is perfect I think to test it out and practice and play with your supplies which is what I'm gonna do today uh, I also have a distress stain these are supplies that are all very different um, so they would react differently on your project but it's also things that I find a lot of people purchase and then don't use or are not sure what to do with so this is a great way to make your mistakes or get your practice in so that when you do want to use it in a project you know exactly what type of uh, media you want to use I'm just gonna grab a brush and I am going to just dive right in I have some water here I'm just gonna wet my brush and I think I'm going to just start with watercolors because I think that's the most common uh, product that people own. Let's see, why don't we do some orange here. See, and this kind of lets you see what your colors look like. If you want to add one coat or two coats or more, you can kind of get a, a feel for what each color looks like what they will look like reacting with other colors or other types of media or paints. Some red. If you wanted your pages to be less flimsy, I would just recommend gluing some of your pages together. You could even probably attach more than one catalog together to have like a set of booklets that are just all together. Or you could have a booklet per type of medium so you know you could use one catalog for watercolor practice you could use one catalog for acrylic colors you could use one for practicing using your gelatos etc etc you know you don't have to commit to any you don't have to commit to anything when it comes, <laughs> comes to art or creating you do whatever you feel you want to to do and play with and try so I'm just kind of getting color on here. I'm really not thinking about this or anything. 
I'm just trying to see what the colors look like as I put them down. Let's see, maybe some of this yellow. This is what I have so far. I just threw some watercolors on there and just made a, a background. You could use this even as like a very inexpensive type of art journal if you wanted to do that. I don't think it's something that would um, last you long term if you wanted to save your artwork or you wanted to really put your work away and, and have it last for a while. I wouldn't recommend using this for that purpose. But if you wanted to kind of just play around and have a practice art journal, this would be a good way to do that. I'm going to let this dry and then I will be back with a different type of medium um, that I'm going to add right onto the same page to see what that looks like. This is what I have and I'm going to actually use the magicals which are also activated with water. Let me add some of this pink. So obviously once I add water, the watercolor that's on here is probably going to be reactivated but that's fine I don't I don't mind that at all and so let's see I've only tried using these like once before so I don't have much experience with them and I know you just kind of sprinkle it on there and it should like do some magical type of things I love that it has like different colors and pigments that come out from it. They kind of like bloom as it reacts with the water. Excuse me. So I'm going to spritz it. Let me cover it up. It's also interesting that it looks really dark. It looks like a plum in the jar. But on the paper, once reacted with water, it does not look like that at all. Now that's pretty cool. All right, now let me try a yellow. This is called Pineapple Paradise. The other one is Hibiscus Rose. Let's see what this looks like. Don't mind the little squeaky noises. That's my puppy. <laughs> and she's keeping herself occupied, which is great. Okay. I can't really tell if it's on there or not. And it looks like a little goes a long way with these, so I don't want to get too crazy adding a bunch of it onto there. Now that looks really pretty. It looks almost like marble. All right, so I've got some of that down. And move it around, okay. So it reacts well. And again, this is me just practicing with these different types of mediums, things that I haven't really used before that I want to become more familiarized with. Okay, so I think I'm good with that. And then again, I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to move on to a different type of medium. All right, so I'm now going to move on to acrylic paints. Now these acrylic paints are not good. They uh, were on clearance so I purchased them but once I opened them it looked like they were just just going bad basically. But you know what? They still have pigment. They still um, will paint. So I'm still going to use them for this. And again this is really all practice. So what you do doesn't entirely matter other than it's giving you some valuable experience. All right, now that one's good. So you can see the difference there between the two paints. That's how you know that a paint has gone gone bad. This one is almost like jelly and this one is nice and creamy. So why don't I take, let's see, you're gonna still get some paint out of there. So it's not a total loss. And I'm just gonna maybe do some marks on here, just playing around. I'm rinsing off my brush. I'm going to use the same brush for the blue. 
and I'm just gonna maybe make some stripes with that. I think I might actually uh, bring in a stencil and see what that is like. Maybe a stencil I haven't used yet. So here's a stencil uh, by the Crafters Workshop. And I'm going to try this out. I've never used it. I don't know if I should wait for that. I don't think I need to wait for that to dry. But... Um, this was given to me so it has been used but I've never used it so I'm gonna actually use like a sponge to get the color through the stencil and for this one I think I'm gonna use the pink Let's try that out. Oh, it went all under the stencil. Let's try it again over here. <laughs> That's not working out very good. And I know it's because I'm moving this stencil around. All right, a little better. Or I could just take my mistake and do something else with it. Okay. All right, now you guys know I'm always making errors on film because um, that's just the kind of crafter that I am. I'm always making mistakes, but uh, I feel like mistakes are part of the process when you're creating, and I am not ashamed of them. <laughs> I'm not going to hide or edit them. Look, there's another mistake. Uh, I'm gonna go wash this off, and then I'm gonna let this dry, and I'm gonna come back and try something else. I've dried my page and with whatever acrylic paint was left on my acrylic block, I just kind of smushed it onto the next couple of pages so I have a background to work with when I return to that. And then anything else that was left I just put on a card base and some card mats to use in a set of cards. So nothing goes to waste. Now I haven't given up on this stencil yet. I think I'm going to try and get the pattern on there maybe with some gesso I will try that I'm gonna use this texture paint instead because it's thicker than the gesso that I have that I normally use so while I like that other gesso the acrylic gesso because it's um, somewhat watery for something like this I don't know if it would work very well especially since the paint already kind of you know, pulled underneath the stencil. So I know that that's not really going to work with this type of stencil. Now I'm gonna try to hold it as flat as I can so I can get it on there without too much of a problem. I have a feeling this is just a type of stencil that things get underneath and you can't entirely avoid it. Yeah, so I don't know. If anybody has a recommendation for that, uh, please let me know because I've used other stencils and I haven't really had a problem like this. It's uh, maybe because it's so detailed. I don't know. But okay. I'm going to just have to live with that there. All right. So my page has now fully dried and I. Um, so I'm gonna collage over this because I'm not happy with the, you know, the blobs there. Like I dabbed them up a little bit, but that didn't really work. I also did some spritzes of uh, black sparkles uh, using the Spectrum Noir um, Onyx Black Sparkle uh, Brush, 
and so I got a little bit of like the black spritz on there um, I don't know if after I cover it that's even gonna show so I might just let me just put some more now I have to be careful with that brush because every now and then it just spills everywhere and so I have these pieces that I fussy cut off of a, a really really old papaya journal and uh, yeah as you can see so I just like save it and I cut pieces out of it because I really like uh, some of the work that's in there and so I'm gonna put this here and then I'm going to use this which is from the journal to put it over that and then I'm using this as the title it says gratitude right over there and then just some flowers that I also cut out I'm gonna be adhering these on here using a gel medium and this is basically the same thing as glue is just uh, better for long-lasting uh, effects and it is really good to use with mixed media my baby is next to me now so you might hear him but for this I'm going to use this flat brush I think my gel medium is actually starting to dry out might have to just get myself a new one that's So I'm going to apply some to the back of my collage piece and you can also apply some onto the background there if you choose so. And I'm going to be placing that right there. You can also seal it in if you feel like it's not staying down. <laughs> oh, that's my baby playing with the book. Let's get it underneath there. I kind of wish I had waited for the spritzes to dry, which I did not wait for. Okay. I also did some stamping with uh, just a word stamp. It's just a definition of art. And uh, some other, like, random square stamps just to give it a little bit more texture on the page and now I'll put this on now the reason I'm putting this down here is I didn't like the look of her head just floating there so I felt I needed to ground it somehow and that's why I chose this location for these things. this is the finished page and remember this started off as just practice playing with watercolor paint on this catalog um, oh there's my second page on the catalog and so you know it's just an idea something you can do with your junk mail I hope this gave you some ideas I hope this was helpful to you in some way um, I'm sorry I didn't go into the details of what these specific uh, supplies are I can try and do that if anyone is interested in knowing like the very specific details about gesso and gel medium and you know the reasons that you use them and why they're good and things like that um, but there are plenty of videos out there that could explain it probably a lot better than me <laughs> but if anyone is interested please you know comment below and, and I will try and talk about that in the next uh, mixed media project that I uh, that I work on if you like this video please give me a thumbs up if you want to see more videos like this <laughs> and hear a baby in the background please subscribe and I will see you all in the next one bye